Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this from the blockchain backer, XRP has the highest daily close in 64 days. Let's get that rotation going, guys. What he's talking about is this. XRP has been on a bit of a tear over the last few days. And this, guys, just as Bitcoin is calming down. So let's take a look at Bitcoin first and let's take a look at it on the hourly. Uh, Bitcoin, you know, coming off that uh, bullish rally and really demonstrating a very nicely formed bullish pennant here. Uh, so this is a classic textbook example of a pattern that you see when the rally wants to continue moving upward. Okay, Bitcoin finding a lot of buying pressure over here, uh, and then some sellers taking profit, but uh, Bitcoin buyers are still pushing the selling price up, sellers are pushing it down, but it's not really breaking past, uh, you know, here, give or take. I mean, of course, we have some wicks dipping down below there, but uh, ultimately, you know, we're, we're finding that the level is really not moving past this level, say for a few times, about 15,400 per BTC. And that's a long way. We've come a long way since the beginning. Now XRP is trending upward. This is XRP on the hourly. Uh, and we're seeing it sitting at about 26 and a half cents. Let's not forget, guys, that is a significant move for XRP. Over the last three days, uh, we have seen, if I go from the bottom of this tail here to the top of this wick, we have seen an over 17% increase for XRP just in the last three days. So what is this going to mean? Are we going to see uh, XRP break this high here? Continue moving to the upside? Of course, it still does need to breach this level of about 347.347. Uh, and then finally, the next big level of resistance up here is 50 and a half cents. So money being pumped into XRP after Bitcoin is taking a bit of a rest now. And this might come in waves, okay? We might see Bitcoin continue to rally while altcoins take a rest. And then uh, as soon as Bitcoin starts uh, settling down and forms something like this, that's when we start to see Bitcoin investors pumping their money into altcoins and then altcoins start to rally and then the cycle recommences. So how is this looking for Bitcoin? How is this looking for XRP? This from XRP Crypto Wolf, Bitcoin's price rally during the week of the election. So as we know, this was election week uh, and now it's Saturday and traders say more money is waiting on the sidelines. So Bitcoin was rallying during the week leading up to the election, a lot of uh, uncertainty there. And there still is a lot of uncertainty, at least at this moment in time. Uh, we still don't know who the winner of the election is, but this is good news uh, brought to us by XRP Crypto Wolf, by the way, because hearing that money is on the sidelines gives me confidence that there are more investors interested in pumping money into the cryptocurrency market even after we find out the results of the election. So as markets continue to digest the 2020 US presidential elections, unique uncertainties, Bitcoin traders say there's capital on the sidelines that could propel the digital currency's price to further highs. The price of Bitcoin has swelled during the past week, breaking through key price levels, including 15,000. Bitcoin isn't the only crypto. And then it goes on to talk a little bit about Ethereum. Also, they mentioned that stock soared as well. Uh, if I go down here, as for crypto, trading firm executives say investors are still sitting on the sidelines and waiting to allocate more into cryptocurrencies once the result of the elections are finalized. At last check, former Vice President Joe Biden appeared favored to clinch the Electoral College, though ballots continue to be incrementally counted in several U.S. states, of course. Uh, we saw this as a great time to go risk one, said Kyle Davies, co-founder of Three Arrows Capital. Uh, he said this to The Block Live. As soon as this clears, all this cash is going to be deployed. Let me repeat that. As soon as the US elections all have been said and done, when everybody knows who the next US president is going to be, there is a bunch of cash on the sidelines and all this cash is going to be deployed into the crypto space, which will indeed boost Bitcoin. And who knows, maybe some other altcoins as well. Although we know Bitcoin is the most uh, popular cryptocurrency, it has name recognition, so it will likely uh, fare best first. But, you know, people get curious, and this is why alts are rallying, because people, uh, you know, they see that alts have been uh, suppressed, uh, perhaps sitting in key levels of support. Then they pump their money into altcoins, see them rise, take their profits. The cycle continues. Great news for the crypto space. Also this from XRP Crypto Wolf. One million Bitcoin wallets are now holding $10,000 in BTC. So this is a record high as well. Just briefly here, BitInfo charts data shows that 1 million Bitcoin addresses hold over $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. The data also provides a full breakdown of Bitcoin distribution. Uh, and Grayscale Investments highlights Bitcoin's recent institutional appeal, picking up over 40,000 Bitcoin in the last month for investors. So we've also got that Grayscale uh, adding to their assets under management. 
And here's the chart for Bitcoin distribution, if you guys can see this. So now this has increased a record number of people holding over $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. That is also a good sign for the cryptocurrency market. Also a good sign that uh, people are getting off the sidelines. Investors are uh, having faith in cryptocurrency. Investors are seeing a potential outlook for cryptocurrencies. And I'm not talking about the mom and pop retail investors. I'm talking about institutional money flooding in because this is what we need. This is what we need for the crypto market to really grow, for it to uh, reach a $1 trillion market cap. Right now we're sitting at roughly, you know, 450 billion, give or take. So we need that money to pump in in order to push it over the edge, in order to pump more money into alts and to make us all rich, guys. That's the name of the game. This from Mac Attack XRP. More crypto regulation is coming. And when, guys? Well, what do you think? We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And over the past few years, regulatory bodies across the globe have increased their scrutiny on the cryptocurrency space. We have seen improvements. Uh, this article goes on and talks about how 2017 was about hype and fundraising. And uh, I also want to mention the ICO scams. But now, several years later, regulation commonly headlines crypto media. If you guys haven't noticed, when we look at crypto news, we're, uh, we're you know nine times out of ten talking about something that has to do with regulation, something that has to do with governments cracking down on crypto crypto or, you know, finessing regulations so that cryptocurrency can be more widely accepted in certain regions. It's all about regulation. 2020 was a big year for that. So we've heard developments this year, like the United States Department of Justice and the Commodities Future Trading Commission uh, recently brought charges against major crypto derivatives exchange BitMEX, for example. Regulatory authorities, however, have also clarified certain guidelines as seen in the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency Statement on banks' crypto custody abilities. Uh, additionally, many countries obviously view digital asset technology as important, and they talk about how uh, banks are racing to get their CBDCs off the ground. But this is what I find interesting. So crypto regulation is still in its infancy, but we've seen major developments this past year in the forms of CBDCs and tax policies. This coming from Sasha Ivanov, CEO and founder of blockchain-based token building platform waves uh, and that's what he told Cointelegraph. Another quote here from Ivanov, regulation is certainly going to be an area of focus in the crypto space. Going into this next year, as it was in 2020, it is going to be even more prominent in 2021. It's only a matter of time before an increasing number of jurisdictions adhere to regulations. The right kind of regulation is actually a good thing for the crypto space. Waves wants to be at the forefront of the emerging dialogue and help shape the future of regulation in the blockchain space. So Sasha Ivanov, uh, obviously CEO and founder of the blockchain-based token building platform Waves. I don't know if you've heard of Waves, but they are also welcoming cryptocurrency regulatory clarity, the same as Ripple. And uh, I'm sure there are other projects that want the regulatory clarity as well. I mean, if it means stifling your business, uh, you know, kind of like with the beer flu, you know, there are lots of regions where businesses have been put on a hold, cannot conduct business as they usually would, and it's because of the beer flu. Well, this is kind of the same thing, I suppose, uh, with regards to those restrictions, cannot conduct business because of the regulatory clarity, but 2021 is obviously looking brighter. For cryptocurrency adoption as a whole, XRP in particular, there's a theory that just came out about a new ODL, a brand new ODL deployment strategy, which I'm going to get to in a second, guys. There was also this from DJ Peter Vass, uh, and so this is an article, I believe I talked about this a few, maybe it was even a month or two ago, with regards to Data 443, well this has to do with California approving ballot measures expanding consumer data privacy expected to roll out nationally. The company Data 443 is well positioned to benefit from continued increasing cybersecurity burdens imposed on businesses, and uh, guess who they're mentioning in this, guys? That's right, Ripple and XRP. They talk about them vis-a-vis -vis Classic Docs for blockchain, which provides an active implementation for Ripple and XRP that protects blockchain transactions from inadvertent disclosures and data leaks. So thought that was interesting, brought to us by DJ Peter Vass and uh, Mariah KCG, obviously uh, taking a screen grab of that uh, important part of that document. Guys, I'll leave this in the description if you want to read the full thing. It is uh, a little lengthy, but uh, if you want to read it, it's there for you. More news here, guys, with regards to uh, adoption, cryptocurrencies in general, and cryptocurrency regulatory clarity coming out like a lion against... Yes, private coins. We're not surprised though, or at least I'm not. So this from Michael at Valve5 Links, Monero and Dash are no longer available on ShapeShift's trading platform. Uh, so for those of you guys uh, who do have 
privacy coins. Do be careful. Shapeshift delisted prominent privacy coin Monero from its platform. A Shapeshift spokesperson told Decrypt via Twitter. It also delisted Dash. Now these are privacy coins, some of the most popular privacy coins. And they are doing this obviously because they're seeing the changing climate for cryptocurrencies. And if they want to be a, uh, you know, if they want to be seen as serious players in the cryptocurrency space, they have to abide by the rules the same as everybody else is abiding by the rules. So while Shapeshift did not give into regulators in 2018 by starting to comply with the know your customer rules, privacy coins would nonetheless seem to be a good fit philosophically for Shapeshift. Monero, uh, which trades by XMR, is the largest privacy coin by market cap worth upwards of $2 billion. Transactions on the Monero blockchain are obscured through a coin mixing process, and it gives a little bit of information on that. Just want to bring this to your attention though guys uh if you do indeed hold privacy coins just to be careful about that and we're seeing reasons why uh you know bitcoin price is rallying obviously the u.s elections just occurred and even though there is uncertainty uh bitcoin price likely to continue to rally afterwards well i also saw this uh, 26 central banks that met in Russia said that the pandemic is the driving force behind the growing interest in national digital currencies. It seems fairly obvious, but guys, this is really important because, you know, we're not out of a pandemic. This is going to continue into 2021. And uh, if cryptocurrency regulatory clarity was not a big enough issue in 2020, it certainly will be in 2021 because uh, the economy will be that much weaker by that point. Governors of 26 central banks met in Russia to discuss the pandemic and its financial ramifications, according to a news release from the Bank of Russia on Friday. The Central Bank Governors Club, including institutions from Central Asia and the Black Sea region and the Balkans, said the pandemic has brought growth to e-commerce and digital settlement technologies. Digital settlement technologies. Interesting. As a result, that is one of the reasons financial regulators are increasingly interested in central bank digital currencies. Before launching a CBDC, however, a central bank should assess the impact. So it's talking about that CBDCs are obviously needed, but governments are still, uh, you know, in some cases assessing, in some cases rolling out their CBDCs. This is definitely going to be a major theme moving into 2021. I think we're going to see more countries uh, using CBDCs, I think at scale, or at least starting to. The Bank of Russia Governor uh, Alvira Nabiulina also uh, chaired the meeting recently said her central bank's fledgling digital ruble project was promising and that uh, the pilot scheme was likely to start late next year and the beer flu guys has had far-reaching global implications including a higher debt to burden and financial vulnerability of course it's why these guys want to reset the economy and this is not a terrible thing for xrp hodlers okay you got to think to yourself if you're invested in a cryptocurrency that's going to be part of a system that includes a great financial reset you are probably better off uh, investing in something like XRP than investing in something like Monero or Dash, at least at this moment in time. I mean, I'm sure those coins will have their place too, uh, but you know, if they're getting delisted from prominent platforms like Shapeshift, uh, their future is looking more uncertain to me than something like XRP or VeChain, something that's going to solve a problem, something that we can see uh, having a future in this new emerging digital economy. Now, how long is this going to take? And is the lawsuit actually going to be a part of holding XRP back? This from David Liu. I wanted to mention this because uh, I thought this was interesting, especially for XRP hodlers. In case you thought the Ripple case was close to being over or would be dismissed, buckle up. Now, I don't know if this uh, is going to have an impact on the price of XRP per se, especially if XRP is going to be utilized on a grand scale once a great reset occurs. But here's the proposed case schedule for the current Ripple lawsuit that is going on. Uh, of course, you guys have heard about the lawsuit, but uh, these dates are going into 2022, it looks like. And so not only that, and then the second one, 2023. So early 2023 to mid 2023 is finally uh, the date set for trial, April 10th. 2023 so something to make note of i don't actually think that this will affect ripple's business i think that this uh you know ripple's got a team of lawyers working on this and so uh i mean it is important to note if you do hold xrp you probably should be uh, privy to what's going on in the space with regards to ripple uh and xrp the token trial date 2023 i'm sure that a lot has been backed up because of the uh you know because of the pandemic uh the court system i'm sure there's a backlog there wanted to thank dave Liu though uh for posting that Oh yeah, and there was this guy. Um, all right, this is from One Way XRP on Twitter. I think I should just play this. Get banned. 
Hey, Jim, my question is about a company that uses the cryptocurrency XRP to send cross-border payments. That company's uh, MoneyGram, NGI. Yeah, I know MoneyGram, but you know what? You ought to just go back to crypto. I mean, I, I, mean, I like the Bitcoin situation. So therefore, what we're going to do, even though MoneyGram is up a lot, is we're going to buy PayPal because Dan Schulman is going all in with crypto. Let's go to Eric in California. I mean, clearly Jim Cramer has no clue what's going on with regards to Ripple and XRP. As soon as he hears, he heard him. As soon as he heard cryptocurrency, his mind automatically went to Bitcoin because that's what he knows about. And then straight to PayPal because that's the mainstream narrative that the masses all know. Um, if he did a little more research, he'd probably uh, maybe would be interested in a company like Ripple and XRP. But this just goes to show you guys how early we are in this entire process. Mainstream media still focusing on Bitcoin, still focusing on the PayPal uh, thing, which is great for uh, cryptocurrency adoption as a whole. But Ripple and XRP, I think it is uh, one of those diamonds in the rough that uh, people will be looking back in time and thinking to themselves, dang, why didn't I get into XRP? I mean, it was all there. Ripple, the company was doing all these things. It was all public. I should have put two and two together. Well, guys, I'm happy you and I are not going to have that problem. Nevertheless, uh, it's always fun to see a clip like this. Thanks so much, One Way XRP, for pointing us to that. And is Ripple moving headquarters? Uh, I don't know. Mac Attack XRP pointing this out. Fintech Ripple chooses Dubai International Financial Center for its, oh, for its regional headquarters. It sounded a little fishy when uh, I was reading this, and in the title it actually says regional headquarters, but when you go down here and you're just kind of reading the article, Dubai International Financial Center announces on Saturday that Ripple, the enterprise blockchain solution for global payments, has established its regional headquarters in the center. Okay, so maybe I had missed uh, reading that word originally. Sometimes my mind skips over words. I've actually gotten better at uh, speed reading since doing this channel, so uh, I apologize. Uh, it is the regional headquarters clear Clearly, Ripple is not moving from the United States, although they have been toying with the idea. Ripple has chosen uh, the DIFC for its innovative regulations, expansive network, and reputation as a leading global financial center. Ripple and DIFC are aligned in their vision to shape the future of finance. DIFC said in a statement, Ripple is one of the most exciting client additions to DIFC this year. They are well regarded globally for innovation in the finance industry and therefore is a perfect partner and client for DIFC, given our vision and drive for the future of finance. Together we will advance the use of blockchain in Dubai, the UAE, and the region and accelerate the Emirates blockchain strategy in 2021. So the Middle East, going to be an important uh, region for Ripple and remittances. We already know that they do have some business in the Middle East. And I think that in 2021, we are also going to see that region expand quite greatly. Thanks so much to Mac Attack XRP for pointing us to that. And have you guys been wondering about ODL lately? Uh, so I saw this from Anderzell originally. Ripple is giving their customers an offer that will be harder and harder to refuse by improving the ODL experience. Now, when ODL was rebranded ODL and when we were seeing the liquidity index bot we were thinking to ourselves you know remember way back last year we were seeing ODL volumes up uh, fairly high even up until uh, the spring of this year and then back in June Ashish Birla told us uh, yeah, you know, some things are going to be changing. We are going to see a decline. Don't, uh, but, but don't get worried because, you know, we're still on track. We're still doing our thing. Uh, just keep calm and carry on. Then we saw the charts just kind of move in this direction here. Well, apparently there is a theory that a new strategy is afoot. Once the flywheel starts spinning, it will just continue to pick up speed. This, again, from Anders L. And he was retweeting out uh, this tweet here from Tenny Toshi on Twitter. So I wanted to give you this synopsis of this new ODL strategy possibility. Uh, so, it's a tweet thread, pretty short. In the new ODL, Ripple plays a role of the instant liquidity provider, selling XRP to ODL customers. This scheme is to mitigate uncertainty, which equals risk, on exchange rates attributed from latency on domestic rails at the originating countries, i.e. minutes, hours, even days. He goes on to say, with the conventional ODL, customers have been limiting this risk by keeping a certain amount of fiat at exchanges for instant trades. So there's still somewhat of a pre-funded uh, strategy here, kind of uh, similar to what a Nostro and Vostro account would be, even though it's not technically a Nostro and Vostro account. However, this requires their pre-funded money, as he goes on to say. Besides, this cannot mitigate a risk coming from delay until the exchange increases their balance. The new ODL was developed to solve this problem. Ripple instantly provides XRP to the customers to let ODL payments move ahead. Guys, let's not forget that Ripple didn't open a lending service by accident. 
Okay, this lending to clients is a major, major part of this ODL strategy. If the smaller clients have the ability to borrow XRP on credit from Ripple, they are definitely going to be able to leverage that XRP uh, to perform better in the market, to be able to fulfill, you know, higher transactions, faster transactions, more volume of transactions as well for their clients. And so that will level the playing field. The smaller companies will now be able to compete with the bigger guys. So it goes on to say Ripple is paid on slow domestic rails after each ODL payment is completed or even later in the case with the lending service, the line of credit. After Ripple is paid in fiat, they will convert to another asset. It would be XRP typically because they have to have a sufficient amount of XRP for this solution. So 60 billion XRP equals 15 billion USD. That's not enough for international payments, let's not forget. This implies they would buy back XRP in the markets. And uh, then he finalizes it here by saying the information I shared here was confirmed at Swell, by the way, the buyback part is exceptional, but it seems likely as it is consistent with the latest market reports. So quarter three market report just came out uh, and I highlighted some of the topics the other day, but I find this interesting. And so it made me think of the liquidity index bot, uh, which I just showed you. And uh, I have a feeling, it just seems as though I'm putting two and two together here, that uh, this guy, Tenny Toshi, actually created the liquidity index bot because the pinned tweet here from liquidity index bot is a Tenny Toshi tweet. I've developed a new index to monitor market liquidity instead of simple trade volume. And this was from uh, back in November, 2018. He says uh, it enabled enables us to assess net liquidity provision. With this index, I found a jump on XRP liquidity growth at the end of August 2018. Uh, might be consistent with the quarter three XRP report. That was back from 2018. So Tenitoshi uh, seems to be somewhat of a liquidity connoisseur. Uh, and guys, I don't know if you've noticed, look at this negative liquidity on the index bot. This is the XRP Euro rail. Uh, and we're seeing very, very low liquidity here in the Filipino corridor and uh, in the Australian corridor as well. Very, very low liquidity as you guys can see. Uh, and in the Mexican corridor, there is actually negative liquidity here too. So is Tenitoshi onto something? Of course, uh, the line of credit news, you know, we were talking about it at the time. I think it's important to take a look at this, assess it, and really kind of grasp the magnitude of what, if this is true, the magnitude of what Ripple is attempting to accomplish. Let's not forget guys, 60 billion XRP only equals 15 billion USD at the current price of roughly 25 cents, give or take. That is not enough for international payments. So what does that mean? The price of XRP needs to be way higher. And I think Ripple is now on board, maybe pivoting their strategy a bit to help make this happen through ODL. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.